Hello, my name is Adam Bean and today I would like to deploy a Quarkus project as a thin wall or skim jar to Docker. And for this purpose I prepared a base layer image or Docker file called Quarkus and it comes from Docklands and the name is Quarkus, so it's here. And uh, here in lib I would expect all the dependencies, so you will have to copy it by yourself or you can use Docker I push to, um, to, uh, uh, to Docker registry to the central public one. And the Docker file is fairly simple. What it just does is uh, it inherits from my uh, Airhex Java image um, as the others application servers are doing. And it defines deploy dir, install dir, and I'm copying the lib, so it already happened. And then I'm relying on a constant name called Quarkus Runner, and I expose the port 8080. And uh, what I will do right now, create a project, inherit from this image, and run it. So let's try this. So let's create a project and the name of the project. The group ID is the Airhacks in my case. Let's call it doc. This is okay. Yes, yes, hello. And we have the project created. And what I would also like to do is to create the Docker file. So we have now a Docker file and in the POM, we have here a build section. This is the build section, build. And what I would like to do is I would like to introduce the final name. And the final name um, is required to have a stable name of the jar. And I will just call it Quarkus. Actually, this doesn't matter what the name is because uh, this is uh, works differently to wars. In wars from the name, the URI is derived or derived. And in this particular case, it doesn't have any implication on the URI. Uh, of the application, so it's always root. So we have Quarkus, so now let's build that. Maven um, package. And it will build the um, skimmed jar because it just refers to the dependencies in the lib folder. So this lib folder is already on Docker. And this Quarkus runner is what I need in order to start the app. So what I would like have to do is in the Docker file, I will say I would like to inherit from airhex slash Quarkus and then copy target and in the target folder there, there is Quarkus um, runner dot jar into deployment into deployment deployder and this is exactly the same approach what we had before so we have uh, the deployer, and uh, in case of application servers, it would be a thin war, uh, but it's still deployer. So this should be enough. So and now now I can build the Docker image, and I will call that, I'll call it um, Quarkus Docker dot. Now the image is built, and now run it. Docker run minus d minus p. Let's go with 8282, 8080. Then the name is uh, Quarkus Docker. And use the image name. It was Quarkus Docker. This is this one. Quarkus Docker. So Docker PS. It looks good. So uh, And uh, now what we can do, we can actually test the app. And the app is 8282 slash. And we have the Quarkus running. And with the hello, we have the endpoint running. And uh, yeah, this is um, how, how you can build your own image for Docker. And this is actually how you get the same benefits as Thin Wars. So one thing also interesting, Docker history, it was Quarkus. Docker. So uh, as you can see, this base image is uh, was reused two years ago. It's still a CentOS 7 base image. And now all the Quarkus dependencies three, year, three hours ago are 10 megs. This is uh, um, the, the lib folder here. Not everything is used, but it doesn't hurt because it's a part of the file system. And uh, a minute ago, we create the, uh, the mutable layer on Docker with 33 kilobytes, and this is what we run. So um, thank you for watching. 
see you at upcoming conferences, workshops, airhex.com or and the new podcast airhex.fm. So thank you and bye.